I'm joined now by Liana Kachatrian, Supervising Attorney at West Coast Trial Lawyers. She joins us from Los Angeles. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Just take us through what the prosecution will be trying to do in this case and their arguments that they'll be outlining and focusing on. So, you know, this is this is a huge case, right? And prosecution really has to bring it um, because this is the type of case that really could put Trump behind bars for the rest of his life, right? Um, carrying a maximum sentence of about 20 years, uh, you know, for someone of his age that we, we are looking at life in prison. So the, the biggest argument, in my opinion, you know, there's one really strong argument here. And then, of course, there's one really big defense. The prosecution is really going to try to prove here that, you um, Former President Trump knew and knowingly, um, you know, had criminal intent to not concede the election. Right. Um, and of course, he's arguing that, you know, he didn't know. He genuinely believed that um, he was requesting an honest audit of the votes. Um, and so I think that this case genuinely is going to hinge on intent, which really can be difficult to prove because it's really difficult to prove what is in someone's mind, of course. And so, you know, that's where prosecution's really gonna have to bring the circumstantial evidence, um, you know, tweets, right? Uh, former President Trump is definitely no stranger to putting all of his thoughts out on social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or whatnot. So, so you know, I, I don't think this is a slam dunk case, but prosecution really is ready to uh, to bring it. So take us through the timeline. The prosecution want a speedy trial. The defense, uh, former President Trump's lawyer saying, listen, we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to prepare for. What could we look at in terms of timings now? You know, the reason they're trying to get a speedy trial, because, um, and alternatively, as you mentioned, right, um, defense is going to try to push it as long as possible, because should President Trump win the election um, in 2024, this really goes away, right? There's no um, criminal proceedings against a uh, current sitting president. So that's really going to be a big strategy. I just don't know if they're going to be successful in pushing it out um, um, uh, that far out. What about a jury? What could that look like? Donald Trump's lawyers are trying, trying to move this away from where they're currently due to hold this, where they had the um, opening statements yesterday or the opening charges at, at least. Could he have success in that area? So, you know, venue is something that allows a lot of attorneys to really kind of move cases around if there is grounds for it, right? Um, certainly in a situation like this, any defendant is going to want to move venue because um, prosecution is a very favorable venue here. Um, you know, all the events occurred in Washington, D.C., so venue is actually proper. Um, and I don't think they're going to be able to succeed in moving it to a different venue. Um, but I don't think that it's going to be favorable. Right. Most, if not all, um, you know, voters out there are registered Democrat, um, you know, and so I, I just don't think he's going to get a favorable jury pool, uh, which also is something that works against him and also shows us why his defense team is going to try to move venue. But I just don't think they're going to be successful. OK, Liana Kakatrian, thank you very much for your analysis there from Los Angeles. Thank